Amazon has withdrawn books which were produced by bots, by AI, and put on Amazon for sale within hours of his cancer diagnosis. Now, these books... Charles. Uh, yeah. ..about King Charles mm -hmm. contain some really lurid details about his diagnosis. They right. even included conversations that he's supposed to have with his doctors. Not an examination, actually. Watch it's ones on the screen now, these books. What they were was just a gathering of newspaper cuttings and they trawled social media chat rooms where people who real people we think we have no idea of knowing who've been given a cancer diagnosis to discuss their diagnosis and the conversations yeah. they had with their doctor and this bot put it all together on amazon within hours really distressing king charles has called in the lawyers amazon we have heard today has withdrawn books about the, the books all the books i hope relating to this I had something very similar happen to me. When my book was published in November, The Plot, within hours, a book, kept books came up underneath it, a biography of Nadine Dorries. Amazon is selling them for £12.50. Mm. People are buying them. They're leaving one-star reviews saying this is just a load of, of newspaper cuttings. They've got lurid claims about me in the introduction to the books. And Amazon are taking 65% of this £12.50 that this book's been That's sold That's the for. bit you're cross about. And, well, yeah, I am cross. <laughs> I don't get it. It's not my book. It's not approved by me. I never wrote it. I know nothing about it. But somebody, a bot, somebody's got a bot to churn this stuff out and they're making a fortune on Amazon with this fake bot. So just to tell you what I think my, answer, my solution is to this and what I want King Charles's lawyers, if you're listening, to focus on, is we have the burn principle of copyright. I want them to focus on that. Mm. Anything that is produced by a bot or AI or is computer generated should carry a very big warning, a bit yep. like cigarettes do. Yeah, good. This is not approved, this is not, this is not official. Yeah. This is produced, computer generated, produced by that already a bot exists, or whatever. That system. It doesn't. It does it, no, it does, because I, I'm Part of my work goes on to a site called authory.com. And this they put everything they post on authory. Well, that's through, they choose to through do. Through a, a an AI check. And then you're kite marked, this is original material. Well, they, well in my case, not so, very original. But I, I agree. If Charles you. lawyers want to look at authory, then then yeah. do yeah. that because yeah. it doesn't yeah. happen on Amazon because Amazon are very very oh, I know. conveniently yeah. taking the 65% of every cost. £12.50 people are paying well, look, 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 Amazon is just a ruthless, profit-hungry, voracious US corporation that will make every last penny, cent, you know, dime, whatever, wherever, wherever it is. But I think you're right about labelling. If people want to buy AI books, then do you really want to stop them? Copyright's another issue, but they can. But they can though, yep. Kevin. They don't know what they're buying. I, I the people who are buying this one think they're yep. buying a legitimate yeah. biography of me. But, yep, but there's going to be less less accountability in, you, you in that book. It. And it can be dangerous if it says yeah. he's not having cancer treatment, you know. He, yeah, he's decided he's sucking just sucking nettles use, or yeah. something rather than having radiotherapy yeah, or chemo. Yeah, yeah, or yeah. I don't know which he's having, by the way, but it, nevertheless, it can be dangerous because people can get at the wrong end of the stick. Yeah. But it used to be that you'd made it when you had a parody account on Twitter, and I've got one. Um, but has, they haven't posted for ages. I haven't clearly oh, haven't been no. ridiculous. I can beat you. I've got about yeah. two dozen. Sorry, I'll, okay, I'll, wait, I'll do it when I go now off. It's, <laughs> now it's whether you've had an AI autobiography. Yeah, a spoof or made spoof it. Or, yeah, you <laughs> definitely yeah. made it. Me and King Charles, you'd ever have known me. So, you know, it's interesting because Jeff Bezos used to, he started Amazon selling books because he knew yeah. that the middle class has bought books and wherever they went, everyone else would follow. And that if they bought books, they'd start buying fridges and they'd start buying other things. And that's what he wanted. The books were like the lead in to making Amazon the global kind of superstore that it is now. And Jeff Bezos, if you're listening, you made your fortune. You made Amazon the back of people who read books. So you need to pay a little bit more attention to what's happening with those bots on your site. Well, it needs to be, it needs right. to be consumers now like us, clicking. not to just go to Amazon. Like, I've got an Amazon account, and it's a, it's a fantastic you, service. You've got to be mindful, though, of how it yeah. operates and want to squeeze out all competition. Well, I know, I, honestly, looking at some of these reviews, some of these people are completely innocent. What broke my heart, one man wrote, I bought this for my wife for Christmas, and it's awful. It's just like A4 pages of newspaper cuttings. I'm like, oh, I want to give you a £12.50 back. Send Who him are a copy you? of the plot. Yeah, he bought it. He bought the plot and he bought it to go with the plot. Oh, this is the oh. thing as well. They put them next to, so if you've got a book, uh, they'll yeah. put them next to the naughty. genuine book. That's so naughty. people buy them as a package. Anyway, moving on, that's my moan for the morning. 
Time for your texts and tweets. I'm asking about former Chancellor Kwasi Kwarteng, who says Rishi Sunak needs to swallow some pride and bring back the electoral force that is Boris Johnson. Would you like to see the return of Boris and tell us why? Meryl says we need him back now. I agree with you, Meryl. David says I thought no one could be worse than Boris, but Rishi Sunak proved me wrong. You might have a point there. And Richard says anybody but flip-flop Starmer. Well, you know, two out of three here will agree with that. Some of you have been getting in touch on 0344 499 1000. Keep those calls coming in. It's my first live show and I want to hear from you. Let's go to Dave in Hampshire. So, hi, Dave. Hi, Nadine. How are you doing? I'm all, uh, well, I'm all right. I'm a bag of nerves doing my first live show, but, yeah, I'm sure you're doing better. How are you? Yeah, pretty good, thanks. So, you're asking about Boris Johnson coming back. Now, I did vote for Boris Johnson, um, but I think now he represents all that's wrong with the Conservative Party. So I don't want to see him come back. He was pro-mass migration. He wanted an amnesty for illegal immigrants. He pushed net zero, which I think is you know, an insane economically to do that. Uh, he also caved into lockdowns, which he didn't agree with, if I understand he didn't agree with originally. Um, and he broke COVID rules. Um, plus Brexit, well, he got it done, but it, he sold out to Northern Ireland. So I think all those items, he, he really doesn't need to come back. He's, he's seen as what, what's wrong with the Conservative Party. I know you'll probably disagree. So I'd like to take some of those points. He didn't um, call for an amnesty. I don't believe it. Did he? He did when he was mayor. When he was mayor. Oh, well, he certainly didn't as prime minister. Yeah. Um, he didn't cave into lockdowns uh, legally. Yes, he did. There is. Well, no, he didn't because no prime minister, nobody, Keir Starmer or anybody, would have been in a different position when you're presented with the evidence from the chief medical officer, the chief scientific officer, spy M. Every every leading scientist and doctor in the it world. It was against his instincts, though. It was against his instincts. He fought like a caged, a caged animal against it. I'm talking to Dave, not you, Kevin. I know he's prime he minister, though, not like Dave. A Horace caged Horace. animal against it, but he had no no other option. I think if you saw his evidence for the COVID inquiry, you would see that. And you know, net zero. Well, you know, no one's going to like me for this, but I agreed. Can I just tell you something, Dave? I, agree I don't know too. if you. I'm one of the things that Boris Johnson you. did was that he covered the entire policy ground. And, you know, not just Boris Johnson, but David Cameron, too, was really clever at this. He looked to the left and he, and he put his foot on there. He did it with the environment. He did it with um, animal welfare. He kind of like the green issues. He took that ground from Labour. He looked to the right and he took it from what was UKIP and now is reform. He did it with immigration. He wanted tax cuts, which Rishi Sunak would never put in when he was Chancellor. And he did it on Brexit and a whole load of issues. And Boris Johnson actually straddled the entire policy ground when he was Prime Minister, which ensured that he could deliver all the things he wanted to as Prime Minister, which Rishi actually just threw out the minute he got through the door, including social care reform. Rishi's problem now is he got rid of net zero and he got rid of all the policies on the left. He put in place the Windsor Framework Agreement. He's really just messing it up on Rwanda and he's conceded those gra that ground to reform. Rishi Sunak is standing on a very narrow little island of policy ground, and that is not going to work well for him. At least Boris Johnson was bold and adventurous and went out and, and put his marks and his flags on those grounds. So, Dave, I've got to go. And it's thank you for calling so much. Thank you, Dave, in Hampshire.